Shrinkflation seems to have made its way into everything, including batteries. I've been wanting to make some more DIY portable power stations or even just bigger power stations, not even necessarily portable. So I started researching a bunch of different batteries that I wanted to use to make these systems. Right about then, Renogy actually reached out to me asking if I would give a full honest review on their 12 volt, 300 amp hour mini core battery. That's this guy right here. Now, this comes in at about 55 pounds, but it's 3.84 kilowatt hours of capacity, which is pretty decent. This right here has the same battery capacity as the Anker Solux F3800 and F3800 Plus, but this battery is only $800. So the thought process I had was, could I take a 3.84 kilowatt hour battery and attach it to an inverter similar to the F3800 and make a vastly cheaper system with similar or better specs? And the answer is yes. But the shrinkflation issue comes down to how much you can actually get out of the batteries. And that's why I wanted to do this test on the mini core. So just so that you understand the relationship, Renogy sent this out. I do not have to say anything in particular. I don't have to give any positive review. Just like in every single one of my videos, it's an honest review about the system. I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of each thing. And in this case, we're actually gonna tear down this battery and see what's inside. So my initial testing showed that the mini core is not making as much power as advertised. I'm gonna show you how I did those steps to prove how much the actual battery capacity is in here, but I wanna go over the specs really quick. You know that's a 3.84 kilowatt hour battery. Its nominal voltage is 12.8 volts. It's just called a 12 volt battery, but it's gonna fluctuate between basically 12 and a half and 14 and a half volts, depending if it's charging or fully discharged. The low voltage cutoff is about 10 volts on this. It weighs 55 pounds and you can make this into a large battery bank, including connecting four of these together to make one 48 volt battery pack, also known as a 51.2 volt battery pack. And then you can also make four groups of those. So in total, you can make a battery pack as big as 61.5 kilowatt hours. Now their user manual is clearly written by someone who speaks English as a first language, which is always great. There's a lot of battery companies out there that these things just don't make sense. This one here is very useful to show the voltage and state of charge. So at 13.6 volts, it's at 100%. At 12.6 volts, it's at 9% and then 0% at 10 volts. Now this has all the safety features you'd want with low temperature shutoff, high temperature shutoff, low voltage, high voltage shutoff, all of those things are already built into this. And I'm even gonna show you the BMS that's inside of here as well as the battery cells. So as I tear into this, you can see it's actually really difficult to get in it. Everything is glued properly right here along the edge. And at first I was using a chisel and a hammer. I definitely do not recommend that in any way. It was just the first idea that I had to see if I could pop this lip off. Then a much easier way that I found is just to use a heat gun, heat up one side of the battery, and I used a painting five and one tool to pry that side of the lid off. I went all the way around and was eventually able to get the whole lid off. Now inside, I was happy to see that they are not leaving a lot of space around the batteries. By doing that, they just make a much smaller box. The 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries that I have are much bigger than this, and they're 33% less capacity. So they've really crammed as much as they can into a single box, which is very impressive. I would have loved if this came with a built on screen, there are other brands who do that, and that would make this even easier to use, and I wouldn't have to add this extra screen on the front. But this little screen on the front ended up saving the day, and I'm gonna show you how in just a second. Once I got this opened up and I could look at the QR code, I was actually able to decipher what that QR code means. And there's a simple to follow chart that tells you exactly what all the numbers and characters in the QR code mean, so that way you can decipher on your own for any battery that you look at. There's decent padding inside, there's proper protection of the cells, there is no fire extinguisher or anything like that built in, but this is an LFP or a lithium iron phosphate cell, so I'm not too worried about fire hazard. So once I confirmed that the cells were actually good quality and they were made at the latter part of 2024, I could then tell that they'd already put a lot of care into what's inside their box. But that wasn't enough. I wanted to know for certain if we could actually get the full 300 amp hours out of this. So I bought this inverter quite some time ago from Renogy and it's a 12 volt inverter rated to 3000 watts. I put this watt meter on the front of it. So all that does is anything that I have plugged into it, it will track exactly how many watt hours it consumes over a given amount of time. Now there's one trick that battery manufacturers do to make it look like their batteries are of full capacity. And that is when they are brand new, they will put out more power. 
So if you only do a few cycles on a battery, it could look like it has 300 amp hours. Well, from the get go, as I was doing this test running a space heater, I ran that space heater at about a 0.3 discharge rate. All that means is I was using about 30% of the capacity of the battery in watts. So if I had run 3.84 kilowatts on an inverter off of a 3.84 kilowatt hour battery, that would be a 1C discharge rate. Or if I did half of that, it would be a 0.5C discharge rate. So I did about a 0.3 discharge rate on this, which isn't overly intense for a battery. As I was doing this test, using this meter right here, test after test after test, I kept getting 280 amp hours out of the battery instead of the posted 300. This was concerning because a lot of other YouTubers have found that battery manufacturers are straight up being fraudulent about the capacity inside. I was very surprised to see that that could have been the case with Renogy. So I reached out to Renogy to give them a chance to explain. They assured me that this was indeed a minimum 300 amp hour battery. And I thought, well, there is probably a chance because as you convert from DC power to AC power, there's a conversion loss. There's a certain percentage of that energy that gets used up in the form of heat just from converting from DC to AC. So then they said they were willing to send out a meter in order to make sure that this was indeed getting 300 amp hours out of it. That meter was this one right here. It's just a battery monitor. And these are great units to be able to see like your battery percentage and so on. But these do not track how much power has come out or gone into the battery. It'll show it at a given moment, but it doesn't track it over time. So I thought, well, maybe they're just trying to make it seem like that they're willing to have their system tested. So to be sure, I went and bought this screen right here. And what this does is a few things. Once you get it set up to your battery capacity and you tell it how many amp hours it is and everything, it'll tell you the state of charge. The, it'll tell you the voltage, how much amp hours have gone out, how much have gone in, all of that stuff. So I started doing the test more and more, doing the exact same thing of running the space heater. I didn't change anything about the test. The only difference is we're metering or we're tracking here from the DC cables rather than at the end of the AC output. And the way that this meter works is the red and black wires here, they just are for power for the screen. The blue and yellow go on either side of this bus bar right here. And that means every electron or every amp that goes through here has to get metered here on this screen. So it's a really easy way to track how much energy is going through a DC device. Well, I did the test over and over and over again. I did probably close to 15 tests to test its capacity. And lo and behold, once I put this on it, I was actually consistently getting 307 to 309 amp hours out of it before the inverter would turn off. And even still, it technically had a little bit more juice in it because it wasn't all the way down to 10 volts each time. But consistently between 307 and 309 amp hours is really impressive rather than what we expected to see less amp hours from it. So Renogy is actually supplying a battery that does more than what it's advertising, which is actually more uncommon than common, unfortunately. It's become regular now that you get less than what you're paying for, just like you buy a bag of chips and it's only a third of the way full. Like, we're not trying to buy air. The casing with this, we're not trying to buy air. We want it full and we want it as advertised. So at a 0.3C discharge rate, this will get you over 300 amp hours of output from the DC side and around 91% of the total rated capacity through an inverter like this. Now to make this a better version of the F3800 and F3800 Plus from Anchor Solix, I would take this, I'd get four more of them so that way it'd have over 15 kilowatt hours. That's the equivalent of one F3800 plus three expansion batteries. I would add the 6000 XP 48 volt inverter to this and in the end that would be less than $5,000 to make a very robust off-grid system. Not to mention the fact that the 6000 XP has drastically better solar input than the F3800 and the F3800 Plus has much better solar input now but the 6000 XP wired up this way would absolutely stomp the F3800 Plus in terms of solar input. So then I'd have a large battery capacity, I would have split phase output power and I'd have a ton of solar input. So if you're looking for a DIY way of making your own F3800 type system, I would look at the Renogy Mini Core because this does more than advertise. There are a lot of other brands out there with similar sized and similar spec batteries, even ones that are cheaper. But a lot of those videos that have been put out about them already have shown that you're not getting the full capacity. In the end, that's fraud, that's dishonest. Obviously I don't stand for that at all. So I'm glad to see Renogy is not following those steps. 
you want to work with a company that has a really good standing in the portable and off-grid solar industry, I'd definitely take a look at Renogy. They've never failed me. They have great customer support as well. And you can always add a little screen like this. I believe this is only like $15 that I bought it on Amazon. And you can monitor each one of the batteries if you want. You can even set this up to where you have a whole battery bank going through this meter so that way you can measure all the batteries at once without having to get a meter per battery. Thank you to everyone who likes and subscribes. You're the reason why I do this. Be prepared. See you on the next video.